Modern Warfare 3 has been out for just over a week and now I've got a good feel for the game and how it plays. I'm going to be sharing everything you need to know about sniping. I have perfected the best settings and classes so we'll be running through those today. I've got a solid grasp on the movement and positioning required to succeed with a sniper in hand which we'll be breaking down with some gameplay examples. We'll even cover all those things you might be doing wrong and not even know it. There's a lot of elements in Modern Warfare 3 that you probably didn't even know existed which can really help elevate your game with a sniper. So whether you're on the camo grind on the road to interstellar or just love the idea of primarily sniping but you're having some difficulty. This video is for you. As always folks, I spend a lot of time compiling all these clips and tricks and bits of advice together so if this helps in any way I'd really appreciate a like on the video, give it a thumbs up and please share it around to anybody in need. One thing I should note right off the bat is that the sniper rifles in this game are all very different. You have the Cat AMR which is a heavy bolt action sniper which basically one shots anywhere on the body but is countered by its slower aim down sights speed and fire rate. The KV inhibitor is the middle ground. Solid damage, a good ADS speed, can be used at range and up close, but it has very odd handling as it's like a semi-auto style sniper. The longbow, however, is one to avoid using at all long distances due to its poor damage and damage drop-off, but it thrives up close with its fast ADS speed and unreal fire rate. Knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each sniper and adapting your playstyle to match those will really help you succeed. And remember, unlike most other Call of Duties, you now have 150 health on this game. The time to kill is slower with every other weapon category while your sniper still kills in one. Well, most of the time. As Modern Warfare 3 includes the carry forward content from Modern Warfare 2, you also have access to the entire catalogue of sniper rifles from last year's COD. After doing a little experimenting live on stream, I live stream here on YouTube by the way, so subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to join in on the next one, we came to the conclusion that the sniper rifles coming over from Modern Warfare 2 are in fact amazing on this game. Snipers like the MCPR, the F JX and the SPX perform even better than they did on Modern Warfare 2. And that's just down to the more fluid movement on this game, the extra health, and just a generally smoother multiplayer experience. We'll talk more about those best sniper choices later on. When you move it around the map with a sniper, what can you do to improve your accuracy and just overall gameplay? Well, centering your shot is still a massive part of the game. Try to light up the enemy in the center of your crosshairs while your gun is at the hip before you scope in. This will help eliminate any unnecessary scope down time that are one, reveal a massive sniper glint that will make you stick out like a sore thumb, and two, remove yourself from that very limited view that you get when you're downing your scope. Information is power. The more you're out of your scope, the more you can see what's going on around you and you can utilize that. If an enemy is running, moving, or sliding, chasing them while downing your scope is a recipe for disaster. Try to center your crosshairs ahead of their movement so by the time you've fully scoped in, the enemy has made their way to your aim point and you're ready to shoot. Use the same method for potential areas that enemies may appear from. Like a prediction, Doorways, windows, head glitches, you get the idea. It is easy to get caught pre in those sort of angles, and don't worry, I still do that to this day. But moving around the map, centering potential danger spots is a much better way to string together a streak of kills and be prepared for the action. And look, sometimes you have to learn on the fly. If a lot of your opponents in one game are sliding around corners utilizing the new tactical stance mechanics, center your crosshairs lower than you normally would in anticipation of that slide. But if you are struggling with centering your shot, perfecting your sensitivity is a huge step forward. I play on 1313 which is the right sensitivity for me as I know how much pressure my analog stick needs to move my aim from point A to point B. Start off slow and gradually work your way up finding the perfect values for you. You could also have a play around with the center dot which has a setting that allows you to increase its size in hopes to train your brain to know where the middle of the screen is. Just don't use that large dot in game, it might get in the way a little bit. And look, you can't center every shot and what I can't reiterate enough is that a good sniper utilizes all different shot types in their play style. Take your time and line up a long range shot if you're in a safe position to do so. Drag scope around the corner if you're too weak or not able to peek your full body out and center that target. And hey, if all you have in your locket is a no scope, just give it a go. Don't get stuck trying to quick scope every shot, it'll make you go insane. One thing to note though is that most of the sniping class setups I run through today have a laser equipped, which is a vital attachment for ADS speed and stability, but the massive con is that the laser is so visible to the enemy when you're aiming down your sights. This for example, could easily scare someone off from challenging a choke point or even worse just make you an easy target. So if you were to hold down a hallway or a doorway for example and needed to be down in your scope, pre-aim the outer of that gap like the door frame. This will eliminate the laser from being seen around the corner keeping that element of surprise intact for you to then pull your shot onto the target once they appear. As Modern Warfare 3 is some sort of adaptation of Modern Warfare 2, a lot of the mechanics are similar. So the penalty to your aim down sight speed when jumping is still in full effect. 
it. So try to avoid doing that at all costs. I mainly use jump shotting as a tool to jump above cover or out to the left or to the right of the cover. Whichever way you're using it, always scope in beforehand to eliminate any of that unnecessary slowdown. I shoot at the peak of my jump, which is when the bullet is most accurate, and that technique usually catches enemies by surprise. And another shot style I love to use to surprise the enemy is a drop shot around the corner. They never expect people to do this with a sniper. Push your character to the side while dropping into prone or while scoping into the centered point of where you expect the enemy to be. If you have the right button layout to combine all those things at once without jeopardizing your aim, it is a cheeky shot to have in your locker. I think we could all agree that the flinch in this game when you're getting shot is massive when you have a sniper in hand. Honestly, I would avoid all flinch reduction attachments on your snipers as what you gain in slight flinch reduction, you just lose in overall performance of the gun, which is not what you want. There's two tips for countering flinching, okay? Number one, pull down your aim to anticipate that flinch. I do this quite naturally at this point, but if you're aiming down your sights and you know you're about to get shot, just quickly pull your aim down to aim more towards the lower torso with the expectation that the enemy will flinch you as you shoot. It's not a guaranteed method, but it works out more than you think. Number two, and maybe the preferred option, is to equip the marksman gloves, which aim to reduce flinch and idle sway. On screen right now, I'll show you a few examples of how much reduction these gloves give you. I'd say it's around 25%, 30%, which is pretty effective, and the less idle sway you get is a nice bonus as well. But it's your call on whether you think that reduction will help you enough to get more kills. Personally, I prefer the quick grip gloves for my playstyle, but there is a combination of perks and vests that allow for both. We will run through those in detail later in the video, including the tactical pad boots. Because if you didn't know, they help your sniper scope in faster after sliding. It's unbelievable. This may seem like a simple tip, but just don't get caught out in the open. Even on maps like Wasteland, where it's been designed to be incredibly open, there's still bits of cover scattered around for you to capitalize on. You still die fast if you're in a vulnerable position. So plan out your route in mind, moving from point A to point B, making sure you always have some sort of cover and escape route in mind. There is no harm in backing down from a fight to take it on from a different position. You have some eager gamers on Modern Warfare 3, so don't be afraid to hold down your position and lock down the angle and have them make the first move. A lot of the time you can hear them as well with the footsteps or even just the character movements themselves. Center or pre-aim where you expect the enemy to appear and capitalize on the audio. My final bit of advice isn't movement related or sniper rifle related. It's about what's on your screen. Look at your minimap. You don't realize how much information you gain from that small corner of the screen. Red dots are finally back on COD after years of being without it. So if an enemy fires an unsuppressed weapon, you'll see where they did that from on the minimap. Yes, Ghost is still a perk, but once a UAV is popped, you now have a general idea of where the enemies are. Pair that with where your teammates are, where the objective is, and your knowledge of the map, you should have a rough idea of where the enemies will be, or at least where they're spawning. You have to utilize everything at your disposal to build up a streak and momentum with a sniper on this game. With skill-based matchmaking, the better you get, the better your opponents get. And even with the 150 health, running around quick scoping is a challenge. Know your weaknesses, know your strengths, utilize all those different shot types you have in your locker, and use everything the game gives you to outplay and outsmart your opponents. Now let's talk settings, which with a few tweaks can help elevate your gameplay in a major way. Field of view is a massive one. The higher this number, the wider your field of view, meaning you can see more of what's going on around you. The sweet spot for me is 110. It's not too zoomed out that I can't really focus on those long range shots, and it's not too zoomed in that I can't see what's going on around me. I also changed my ADS field of view to affected, which keeps the FOV consistent with when you're aiming down your sights. Weapon field of view needs to be wide so the weapon is smaller in game, leaving much more room on your screen to see what else is going on around you. It's all about that clarity folks, so get that world motion blur off, get that weapon motion blur off, turn the film grain down to zero, first person and third person camera movement down to the least it can be at 50%. I will quickly cycle through my quality settings, but I'm on PC, some of you may be on console, it's going to be different for every person and every build. For me, the priority is some good quality with some good frames alongside it. Moving over to my controller settings, as mentioned, I play on 13 13, not too slow, not too fast. Pair that as well with the aim response curve type as dynamic. It's much more of a smoother experience when you're aiming down your sights. There's nothing intense about those little micro movements. It handles them really well. Have your ADS sensitivity transition time into instant. It just gives consistency across those sensitivity multiplier values. So whether you're scoping it or scoped it or at the hip, there's just a bit more consistency there in terms of its pace. I do have some custom sensitivity per zoom just on the lower zoom values. Have that at 0.9 because I use a high sensitivity. So when I've got a regular gun, I just want it to be a bit more controlled, a bit more precise. So I have it a bit slower. I know some people like the Black Ops aim assist type. For me personally, I just think default is the go-to, but there's not really much difference between these two. Give them both a try and see 
see which one works for you. I still play on tactical flipped as my button layout so I can slide and dive and prone with my R3, which keeps my thumb on the analog stick at all times. So it improves my aim. So I'm not taking my thumb off to press things that I need to. I have my L1 and L2 and R1 and R2 flipped as well. Dead zone input is currently at five or it used to be 0.05, right? Five on the low end of the right and the left and 99 on the max. I play with auto attack sprint off, which might surprise you, but I actually have single tap run enabled, which is basically the same idea, but it still allows you to slow walk. You can't do that with auto attack sprint because you're always sprinting. Because slide cancel is back, I've got tap to slide on there rather than tap to dive. So I can slide cancel much easier. Anything else here, I'm not really sure I need to touch on, but I will keep scrolling down just in case there's any setting on here that you may need to try out and apply to your game. And I'll finish things up by just showing off some of my audio and interface settings. I don't think any of these are going to change too much about your gameplay, but it's always good to show just in case there's anything on here that you need to pause and take a look at that could be helping with the gameplay. So now let's run through the best class setups, right? We're going through each of these sniper rifles you see on screen at the bottom, their best attachments, and then some alternatives for those who like to snipe a little differently to me. So let's start things off with the CAT AMR. We have the Pedition 24 inch short barrel, which helps with ADS sprint to fight and movement. And the FSS laser basically does the same thing, but it helps with that aim and stability as well. We've got the tactical stock pad for ADS speed and then the ephemeral quick bolt, which is uh, increasing that reach aim speed because this gun needs a fire rate buff for sure. Then the final one is the cornerstone bipod. Doesn't say in the pros that it helps with aim down sight speed, but if you click L2 and go to the show details tab, you can see that this bipod increases the ADS speed by 13.9%. It's 647 without it, it's 557 with. Moving over to the KV inhibitor, we're starting things off with the Custovia Jack 40 barrel. There is another barrel, the Custovia LPM, which helps pretty much the same in terms of ADS and sprint to fire, but this has some good recoil control and gun kick control. Because it's a semi-auto, I'd go with that one. FSS laser again, of course, we've got the Ivanov woodstock at the back. All about that speed, that is what we like to see. The broadside factory grip as well. And then finishing things off with this skeletal vertical grip, giving this good a 437 millisecond ADS time. One of these hand stops that I haven't unlocked yet may help the ADS speed even more, but for now, the skeletal vertical grip will do the trick. For the longbow, it's all about pace, okay? This gun is useless at range, so we've got the FSS laser, of course, the no stock increases so much speed, sprint to fire, movement, all that stuff, but it actually increases ADS speed, even though it says it doesn't in the pros list. I've gone with the 10 round mag, helps for the ADS speed again, and I just don't think you need 30 bullets with it. I actually have the high grain rounds on there, which just helps with the damage range a little bit, because I do still fight at range with this gun, even though I know I shouldn't, but if you don't care about any long range shots, just take that off and go with a grip or a sight. If you slap an optic on there, you're looking at 374, 364. But lastly, we do have a hand stop for the barrel, and that gives us a 424 millisecond ADS time. Moving over to the snipers from MW2, I actually think the MCPR is the best. Don't get me wrong, the FJX and the SPX are incredible, but if you want an all-rounder with high damage and amazing ADS speed, I think the MCPR is the one. So we've got the FSS laser again, Merc stock at the back, Cronin cheetah grip, five round mag, and honestly, the fifth attachment is yours to choose from. I've got high velocity because I love the idea of that instant connection at range, but if you want a faster fire rate, you can go with the smooth ball. If you want an optic on there, you can get, you know, a VLK or something. You can even have the barrel on there if you want, and it makes it even quicker. Now onto the FJX, and this is a bit of a weird one. The barrel that you would use to help with aim down sight speed massively on Modern Warfare 2 only increases it by 0.2%. It goes from 487 to 488 with this build right here. So don't use that barrel, go with the VLK laser. You've got the feel wrap handle. A score 40 grip is the best for ADS speed if you've got to choose between that and the stock because the stock gets rid of the grip, as you can tell. And then the last two attachments, once again, are all yours to go with. You can go with the rechamber speed with AFJX Blast. I've got the high velocity on there as well. Get an optic on there if you want to increase the ADS speed even more. The MCPR scope on this gun is amazing. So is the Locust. It allows for a lot of variety, which I think that's why a lot of people are going to use this gun. And lastly, the SPX, probably going to be the go-to for anyone who loves aggressive sniping, okay? We have the 18.5-inch Bryson Factory Barrel FSS Laser, again, a PVZ 890 tack stock, which helps the ADS speed the most out of the two stocks. We've got the Schlager Match Grip once again, and the fifth one's all for you. I've got high velocity. It's a weird choice, but as I did on Modern Warfare 2, I might go with this as well. The eight-round mag gives you three extra bullets, only hurts the ADS speed by 3.7%. The bolt is there to increase that fire rate. The choice is all yours. So with the launch of Modern Warfare 3, they introduce vests. Now, each of these vests give you certain pros and certain cons. The only vest that allows you to have your primary, your secondary, your tactical lethal, your field upgrade, and all your perks is the infantry vest. And the perk to having this vest on is that it increases your attack sprint duration and reduces 
reduces the refresh time. So you can just move around the map a little bit quicker. The engine DFS, you do lose your lethal grenade, but you gain an extra tactical grenade, so double stims or double stuns. You can see enemy equipment and field upgrades and kill streaks through walls. You do also earn your field upgrade a little bit quicker, but the main selling point for this is you get double gear. If you're like me and you can't decide between ghost or tack mask or mag holster, you don't know whether you want a faster reload or to stay off the radar or not take as much damage from a stun grenade, now you have the choice of two of them. The only other vest I would recommend when sniping is the overkill vest. Now this allows you to have two primary weapons, so you can have two snipers or a sniper and a regular gun. Whatever you feel comfortable with, it gives you the ability to increase your weapon speed and reload while sprinting. And if you do rock this, you also have the ability to change your gloves. So I would always go quick grip gloves because it increases my weapon swap speed. I hate feeling like a slug. But if you do rock this overkill class, you don't need to use that anymore. So you have the ability to try something different. So you could have scavenger gloves, which resupplies ammo. Or you can have those marksman gloves, which reduces that sway and flinch while you're ads And while we're on the perk section, let's talk about the boots, all right? The covert sneakers reduces your footsteps towns to zero. You are silent. The only thing people can hear is your little character movement. If he's reloading or his coat's just brushing against the wall, like that is what is heard by the enemy. The only other boots I'd recommend when sniping are the tactical pads. Now, I've probably already touched on this earlier in the video because this is key information that you need to know when sniping. These boots increase your stance transition speeds, which is, you know, a nice touch. You move faster while you crouch as well, and it even increases your slide velocity. But the key here is that these boots allow you to aim down your sights while sliding. You don't realize how much of a game changer that is. With any of the boots, your character needs to stop sliding before you can start scoping in with your sniper. Whereas with these boots, you can scope in as you slide in. So if you're slide cancelling, the animation is already beginning because the boots allow you to scope in while you're sliding. It actually feels like you're scoping in quicker when technically you're not. It's just allowing you to scope in while you're sliding. So if you're a player who runs and guns and gets aggressive and you don't mind people hearing your footsteps when you're near them, tactical pads are the way to go because it genuinely feels like it's making your guns scope in quicker. On that note, my friends, I think I've covered everything I need to in this video to help you improve with a sniper rifle on Call of Duty. We've touched on the little things. We've touched on the big things. If there is something I have missed and you need to know an answer, drop it in the comments below. Get some questions going and I'm sure I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you all learned something. And if you did, get out there and show me how it's done.